Good day, subscribers. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am Jeremy. This is the Financial Education Channel, and today we're talking about 10 stocks that are making absolutely massive moves, guys. Some of these stocks have moved over 20% plus just in the past five trading days, okay? So we're gonna kind of look at these stocks and kind of talk about why each of them has moved up a ton or down a ton. We're kind of, you know, covering both sides of things. So hope you guys really enjoy this. As always, make sure you hit a thumbs up if you do. And by the way, make sure if you want to get discounts on any of my courses once a month I am doing a discount a 48 hour flash sale so the first link down there in the description if you want to join that email list that's the only way you can be notified and know when I'm having those deals and whatnot so uh, you can check that out if you want first link down there in the description the first stock up here is Chesapeake Energy look at this one in the past five days, it's up nearly 23%, guys. Nearly 23% in the past five days. An unbelievable move here for Chesapeake Energy. So Chesapeake Energy, there's really no specific news around Chesapeake Energy, but Chesapeake is a smaller oil and gas stock, okay? These stocks tend to move up or down a lot depending upon where the price of oil is and natural gas and where things are moving there. They tend to either outperform the, what the big oil stocks are doing or underperform, so meaning like, let's say um, oil is going up a ton, right? You're right, or natural gas prices. These type of stocks, these smaller ones like Chesapeake Energy can move up way bigger than some of the old big oil names. But at the same time, you know, if things are going south, these ones get hammered, get killed way more than some of the big oil names. So I would say just with the strengthening, uh, I guess you could say oil market and prices, and now people are talking about maybe 80, 90, maybe even $100 oil this summer, those type of companies like Chesapeake benefit in a massive, massive way. They go from businesses being thought about as well, they might go bankrupt or something, to wow, also now they're gonna be able to bring in huge profits. So that's why that one moved up. Boot Barn, Boot Barn moved up uh, well over 12%, nearly 13% this week in the past five days. So Boot Barn shares soar after earnings and revenue beat. Boot Barn soared more than 10% on Tuesday after the company beat earnings expectations. The company reported fourth quarter net income of 6.9 million or 24 cents a share compared to 2.6 six million or 10 cents a share in a year ago period. So a massive, um, you know, I guess you could say raise there in the EPS from 10 cents last year to 24 cents now. Adjusted earnings were 24 cents while revenue rose to 170.8 million from 163 million in a year ago period. Analysts surveyed by Fact Check had estimated earnings to come in somewhere around 18 cents and revenue to come in 163 million. So basically they beat on EPS very nicely. They beat on revenue and uh, they well outperformed year over year. So uh, that's one of the reasons Boot Bart moved up big this week. Next one up here is WWE World Wrestling Entertainment. I'm sure a lot of you guys like me uh, watched this growing up. Heck, some of you guys might still watch it. I don't judge. Five days and this one is up over 18%, okay? Look at the year to date on this one. Isn't that amazing? Up over 68% year to date and we aren't even halfway through the year. An unbelievable mover here. So World Wrestling Entertainment is talking to other networks about its SmackDown television franchise, according to The Hollywood Reporter. The show is being shopped to various networks after NBC Universal declined to re-up its deal. The Trade Journal said, NBCU's uh, USA Network has been airing the popular pro wrestling matches. The Journal said NBCU is believed to be focusing on renewing WWE's Raw, and that deal is expected to close as much as three times its current value, guys. Three times its current value, so basically, WWE um, is kind of on a big upswing right now and they're benefiting huge from it. And now they're talking about three times more NBC will have to pay for the Raw series than they did, you know, uh, just a few years ago. And then the SmackDown, we can imagine what that will bring in for numbers. So um, great news if you're a WWE shareholder out there, that company's just kind of clicking on all cylinders right now. Next one up here is Macy's. We got a retailer, a physical retailer that made the list in here, guys. Look at this one. In the past five days, up over 15%, guys, Macy's, holy smokers. I remember in that one, I, I swear it was under $20, not even too long ago, now it's a $34 stock. So Macy's, they kicked off earnings season and investors didn't know what to expect from the report, but the company showed further signs that its turnaround strategy was gaining traction. Comparable sales were up 3.9% on an owned basis and 4.2% on an owned plus license basis, marking its best quarterly growth in more than three years. That performance benefited in part to its shift uh, to its annual friends and family sale to the first quarter. Adjusted for that comparable sales uh, of owned 
alone, plus license base would be up 1.7%. Overall revenue increased 3.6% to 5.5 billion, easily beating the 5.39 billion was expected. Meanwhile, gross margin improved 70 basis points to 39% and central selling general and administrative expenses fell 90 basis points as a percent of revenue. As a result, adjusted earnings per share increased from 26 cents a year ago to 48 cents, topping expectations of 35 cents. Massive, massive beat there from Macy's. Um, great numbers there. Um, we could say maybe there's starting to be a turn there in Macy's. Um, uh, you know, obviously everybody gets really concerned about physical retailers. It doesn't matter who you are, physical retail, a lot of people worry. And you know, there definitely should be worries. You know, consumers are, are buying more and more online. But I think the death of, of all physical retail has been overly exaggerated, and I think it's gonna take a long time to play out. Also, you know, a lot of these companies are focusing online, getting more serious around that. So um, I, I wouldn't get uh, too overly panicked that, oh my gosh, Macy's and everybody's gonna go under. I, will they be hurt over the long term? Absolutely, but you look at these companies and um, they're, they're coming back with some strong numbers. And speaking about physical retailers, we got another one here on the list, another physical retailer, the Container Store. Five day change, look at this one. This one might be the biggest move out of anyone on the list. Up over 28% in the past five days, guys. Look at this one, up 73% year to date. Anyone in that stock that you know decided to buy in in December, January is making an absolute killing on this stock right now, okay? The container store, they there's really no news around them. They're gonna re be reporting numbers this upcoming week. Maybe someone on Wall Street already has the numbers and is buying the stock heavy or something, but there's no specific news that came out that I could find on the container store this week on why that stock is up over 28%. It might just be uh, investors buying in because they feel like numbers are going to be good or something like that. Um, there were some liquidity concerns around the container store. And maybe now that, you know, uh, I guess you could say people are being a little less scared of some of the physical retailers. There's just a lot of investor money piling into the stock. We don't know, but they're going to be reporting numbers next week. Should be very interesting. Um, I can tell you the way that stock's moving, likely that next day that stock is going to move massively, either up a ton or down a ton, because this is a type of stock that is just really volatile tile right now guys next one up here blue apron we know this has been probably the worst it's probably the worst ipo i've ever seen in my 10 years of being in the stock market honestly absolute disaster but this week it was up nearly 15 percent blue apron was up nearly 15 percent and the news came out that new blue apron cfo is a pepsico veteran so basically they announced they got a new cfo now and uh, he's from pepsico and whatnot and he's supposed to, you know, help the company focus and kind of, kind of get their money right. You know, CFO, they're in, they're in charge of the finances and all, you know, everything that's going on as far as that goes. Um, now investors are believing that he can be the right guy to kind of get the company back on track, get them through these tough times, and hopefully push through this whole thing over the next couple of years and get them out to the other side, where hopefully they can be a long term, uh, you know, long term growth player in this. We'll have to see if that comes true or not. But and at least investors are believing it for the short term here. Vips Holdings, a Chinese retail retailer is uh, down big here this week, okay? So this is one of the biggest growth plays that, you know, a lot of, especially a lot of American investors love is uh, this stock. And so this one's down close to 20% in the past five days. And that was after they reported some earnings that honestly, uh, they weren't that bad in my opinion. The e-commerce site reported earnings of adjusted uh, 17 cents per share, which were below Wall Street's consensus estimates of 18 cents. Vips Holdings also unveiled its latest revenue for the period, which came in at 3.2 billion which marks an almost 25% gain in local currency compared to a year ago period. The Wall Street consensus estimate called for 3.08 billion. So they actually beat on, on revenue there. Um, they missed on one cent of EPS. Uh, the numbers weren't that bad here, guys. The, I mean, I, I don't understand why the stock ended up falling 20% uh, this week. Uh, basically, as far as the next quarter goes, for the second quarter, VIPs Holdings uh, is calling for revenue of 3.2 billion to 3.36 billion, which has a midpoint low to the lower end of analyst expectations of 3.36 billion. That would mark a growth rate in the range of 17 to 22 percent. So I guess the fact that they barely missed on EPS and they barely missed on guidance, I guess that's what's sending that stock lower. Um, does it deserve a 20 percent down for those very slight misses? I don't know. You know. Um, 
I haven't looked into the valuation of that company in quite a while. So, you know, who knows there, but that's an interesting one. Flowers Foods, look at this one, down nearly 15% this week. Flowers Foods, uh, Q1 sales of 1.2 billion versus 1.2 billion were expected, all right? So nothing, nothing out of the ordinary there. Q1 earnings came in at 31 cents. Reaffirmed outlook for fiscal 2018, fiscal year 2018 earnings per share, view of $1.10. Revenue view of nearly $4 billion. So uh, not, once again, a stock, I'm not too sure why that fell so substantially, but you know, it is what it is. William Lyon Homes, this one was down over 8% this week. William Lyon Homes, and uh, they reported numbers on May 8th, and I, I gotta say, these numbers were pretty impressive, so I'm surprised the stock ended up selling off so much this week. William Lyon Homes reports first quarter 2008 results, 44% increase in home building revenue, 28% increase in new net home orders, 33% increase in dollar value of orders, 19% increase in dollar of backlog, guys. Those are really strong numbers. And um, I gotta say, you know, with me being a Toll Brothers shareholder, I guess kind of worries me a little bit about going into this earnings because th those numbers were phenomenal and yet that stock still went down. Maybe that happens to Toll Brothers. They're gonna report this upcoming week. Maybe they report numbers and they're unbelievable and they're, they're great, just like William Lyon or maybe even stronger. Maybe their stock falls, who knows? We'll just have to see. Um, I'm probably gonna buy more. If it does fall, we'll just have to see, guys. Baidu, so Baidu wasn't a huge mover except for today. Today that stock was down nearly 10%. And that is on news that former Microsoft executive uh, Ki Lu steps down as Baidu's COO, a guy that you know investors believe a lot in. Um, Ki Lu was hired at Baidu to take over daily operations from CEO Robin Lee in early 2017. So that's not that long ago, okay? Maybe a year and a half ago or so. Um, prior to that, he was an executive vice president of Microsoft and was in charge of Office, which Office is a big growing segment for Microsoft's business right now. In a statement, China-based Baidu Lou said he can no longer full-time work in China, all right? And so, you know, uh, this is all very interesting. He says for family reasons and whatnot. Lou said in a statement that he can no longer uh, full-time work in China for personal and family reasons and will spend more time in the U.S. He will retain his role as vice president of Baidu's board and will focus on research and development, although he won't be working full-time for Baidu. Um, I think that's interesting. It doesn't sound like this guy is going away completely completely from the company. Sounds like he's just stepping down as far as the role he wants to play in the company. Um, but you know, he's still going to be there, uh, you know, working part time and whatnot. So um, we'll have to see if that's justified. Obviously, a lot of people put a lot of faith into this guy, thinking he can really kind of build out AI and whatnot. Um, so we'll just have to see where Baidu, do you guys have an opinion on the Baidu? Do you have an opinion on any of these stocks mentioned here today? I would love to hear from you guys in that comments section. As always, make sure you hit a thumbs up if you enjoyed, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Thank Thank you for watching, have a great day.